So today, about 70% of all deaths worldwide are caused by non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome, and cancer. And the main cause, and one of the most important causes behind this, is insufficient physical activity and imbalanced diet. We know that for a healthy lifestyle, we need a good equilibrium, good balance between energy intake and energy expenditure. However, from which sources this energy or the calories and nutrients should come from is not quite clear. It can, can vary and can be different. We know that our diets should provide us with sufficient amounts of carbohydrates, of lipids, proteins, minerals and vitamins. But what we do not know in that many details yet is how our di individual differences might be. So how much more does one person need of one over the, or the, the other? One of the nutrients, one of the carbohydrates that we need in our diet is dietary fibers. And dietary fibers is one group of nutrients that very often falls below the recommended daily intakes. While insufficient dietary fiber intake does not really cause a deficiency, it is well documented and well known that eating more fibers will actually help uh, to promote a healthy lifestyle. So eating higher amounts of fiber will help your sugar and lipid metabolisms and therefore help in, in tackling the non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease and, and type 2 diabetes. They also support the growth of our intestinal microbiota and they also deliver additional phytochemicals, nutrients, um, antioxidants and things which come in the same fractions as fibers. Dietary fibers are mostly large uh, polysaccharides which are made of different building blocks and these are linked in different ways. They're not digested by our own intestinal enzymes, so we don't digest them, we don't get energy from them. Depending on how they're structured, they're also different in, in type. So there are insoluble fibers, which have these reasonably rough, woody uh, mouthfeel and structure. But what many people are unaware of are the soluble fibers, which are actually soluble in water. And these soluble fibers have a very different physical chemical characteristics. They, for example, create or have these bonds and, and interactions with small molecules like sugars and, and minerals. And part of these interactions are reasonably weak. They can be temporary, but they still have an impact on the, on the nutrition. And my lab is working on analyzing and creating methods how to measure these interactions at the molecular level. So it's important to eat different types of fibers from whole grain products, from vegetables, from uh, nuts and, and uh, pulses, so that you also get a different variety of the, of the different fibers, as well as the so-called fiber co-passengers. So a lot of the beneficial nutrients that, that come along. But why are we not eating enough fibers? Fibers obviously don't give the same sensations of pleasure, like uh, high, high sugar and high fat foods but they actually do affect our hormonal signaling in a way that we limit the amounts of e we eat and therefore it helps in controlling the amounts that we actually consume. However, there is still a big gap in the consumer knowledge about different types of fibers which different foods contain and what are these, their effects on our nutrition and on the health. Many people are, for example, unaware of the soluble fibers possibilities in giving a richer, softer mouthfeel. Soluble fibers also offer great advances in food technology since they can be modified to be edible films and, and coatings that can be used in, for example, in breads to avoid staling and food waste and food losses like these because they prevent water desorption from breads. And what we as scientists must do is to really explore and be able to understand the properties but also the possibilities of the soluble fibers and to utilize them in, the, in, in foods that we consume. And together with the industry, create products that actually use the fibers as active ingredients that have an, an active role in the product. But maybe even more importantly, we have to educate the consumers to know what their foods contain or what they are composed of. So when we say that there are carbohydrates like fiber, starch and sugars, one must know that not all carbohydrates are the same. And we can only wholeheartedly recommend the, to increase the intake of fibers, but not of the other carbohydrates. In contrast, in a way, to the previous decade of low-carb diet being very trendy, I would actually propose to go for a high-carb diet, but rather choose the high carbs from the fiber, 
with a knowledge-based and really justified uh, reasoning and, and, um, and solutions um, by knowing the food and knowing the properties of the fibers and thereby uh, inhibit the further growth of the, of the non-communicable diseases uh, incidences. Thank you.